Tonight, growing calls for more police officers in Mackay. Home approvals on the decline. What the ATO is cracking down on this tax return. And shocking near misses at level train crossings. This is 7 News with Rob Bruff. Good evening. Thanks very much for joining us. The Shadow Police Minister is calling on the state government to boost local police numbers and toughen laws. Offences across the Mackay Whitsunday regions were up 9.5% last quarter. That's compared to the same period last year. Stephen Merker has worked as a coach at the Pioneer Tennis Club for eight years. A month ago, thieves struck, making off with $230 from the safe. Not a lot of money, but a big deal to the club. Yeah, very disheartening. The opposition is calling on the government for more officers. There's 1,520 fewer police than what this government promised at the last election. Offences in the Mackay Whit Sunday district are up more than 9% from the first quarter of 2024 compared to the previous year. The number of stolen cars has spiked 34%. Our police here in Mackay are fighting a crime crisis with both hands tied behind their back. A lot of these young people who are being involved in these crimes are being collected very, very quickly by our detectives. But Police Minister Mark Ryan says Dan Purdy and the LNP have zero credibility when it comes to police, as the LNP committed to slashing the number of extra police by more than 1,000 officers. Operation Whiskey has also been rolled out across the region. Mr Ryan says there's already been a total of 1,420 people charged with 3,389 offences to date. The LNP's plan, if elected... We're going to value our police. We're going to give them back the laws that they need. Georgie May Walker, 7 News. New data has revealed housing approvals across Queensland have plummeted to an all-time low. Unit approvals are especially weak falling by 42% over the past three months. Housing supply is lagging behind demand at an alarming rate. The numbers are, are not great, um, given that we are at this huge demand for housing. Last year, 32,000 dwellings were approved across Queensland. That's a drop in every region except the Wide Bay. It falls far behind the federal government's annual target of 49,000, while population growth is closer to 55,000. Because the price of properties increased here and the price of land, people I think are now finding some joy in the northern parts of Queensland. The latest data proving just as much. In central Queensland, approvals rose by 58% in the last three months and in the far north by 36%. That growth is mostly attributed to standalone houses, but builders say units and townhouses will be vital to cater for the population boom. To get to the targets of 55,000 dwellings per annum, we absolutely need to be building more um, units. Builders are also being impacted by strict regulations, including accessibility requirements. We're just tied up by these, these rules that just aren't always logical and we can't understand. Tom Duffy, 7 News. The end of the financial year is fast approaching and the ATO has revealed what it's cracking down on in this year's tax returns. Work-related expenses, rental properties and income statements will all be heavily scrutinised. Some people are already crunching the numbers, eagerly waiting their yearly tax return. We'd love to get some back. We pay plenty. If we can get some back, that would be good. Many Queenslanders will be claiming the essentials. Like a little bit of clothing, um, work boots. Oh, it's not much, just uniform from work. And the ATO will be watching closely. They're the most sophisticated they've ever been. It's scrutinising three main types of lodgements this year. The first is working from home deductions. The second is repairs and maintenance on investment properties. And the third one is people not including all their income in their return at tax time. One big tip for taxpayers. If you haven't spent the money or you don't have an in invoice or receipt for it, then don't claim it. And try not to go crazy with end of financial year bargains. You don't need them. There's no point in getting the government to pay a third because you still have to pay the rest. All tax returns must be lodged or looked over by a tax agent by October 31. Those who don't could be slapped with a fine of more than $1,000. We are, though, focused specifically on those that may choose to try and do the wrong thing. Georgie May Walker, 7 News. 
Rail company Horizon has released images of frightening near misses at level crossings at the launch of its national safety campaign. Since 2016, there have been 27 fatal collisions at level crossings across the country. This is what train drivers see far too often, and this impatient driving can have serious consequences. Level crossings are dangerous. Um, if you don't obey the signs, it could involve, um, involve an impact of a vehicle or a pedestrian. Since 2014, there have been 27 fatal collisions and countless near misses at level crossings across Australia. It's prompted the country's largest rail freight company, Horizon, to launch a new safety campaign. Our campaign is about pushing the message to re um, respect the sign. Lives are on the line. Original train driver Hayley Hess features on 20 billboards across Australia and hopes to encourage more people to be vigilant near train lines. Having experienced a near miss in the past, I have seen firsthand the risks people can take trying to beat the train across the tracks. The campaign is designed to be timeless, to help save as many lives as possible. We've obviously uh, made video, we've made a lot of uh, uh, material that can actually go on social media, we've got children's education packs. And look, level crossings are your friend. The, the, the flashing lights are your friend. They're there to protect you. Look both ways. Slow down. Police are also reminding drivers if they ignore warning lights, they will receive a $400 fine and lose three demerit points. Ben Meehan, 7 News. We'll take a break. In a moment, we'll have a look what's happening around the region over the weekend and pop-up stalls at Queen's Park to support people experiencing homelessness. Stream 7 News anywhere, anytime, live and on demand on 7 Plus. And with 7news.com.au, you'll know the news now. Yeah, nice having you with us here on 7 News. The new $12 million with Sunday Anglican School Steam Centre has received recognition, winning top honours at the North Queensland Architecture Awards. It took out three categories, including Building of the Year, a regional commendation for educational architecture and people's choice. The centre boasts new labs, a greenhouse and state-of-the-art microscopes to better prepare students for university. Well done. Free haircuts, coffees and flu shots are some of the goods and services on offer at Mackay's Homeless Expo. The annual event has or was moved to Queen's Park this year to meet the growing demand for support services amid the cost of living crisis. The Phoenix Place coffee van was giving out snacks and smiles. We are doing coffees and cold drinks and handing out some ham and salad and chicken and salad wraps for the homeless and for anyone that's here. It was among 40 homeless services offering their support at Queen's Park today. Mackay's Community Accommodation Support Agency spearheaded the annual Homeless Expo. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to provide some supports for, for homeless people, but it's also a networking event for everyone in the sector um, so we can better support uh, those in need. It's not just for people but their pets too. Dozens of flea, tick and heartworm tablets were donated to Mackay Pet Rescue, free for the taking. For the average person, a box of three costs $100, so when you're homeless, $100, it, it's a big thing. The event has previously been held at CQ University. The event was growing, uh, so uh, we had to look this year uh, at a, a, a venue that allowed us to spread out a bit more. Our frontline services have, um, uh, have just been smashed. You know, in the, la in the last six months, you know, the, the, the growth and, and the demand for service has just been, it's been phenomenal. George Backlitch, 7 News. Let's have a look what's happening around our region now over the weekend. All thanks to Mackay Regional Council, here's Georgia Bakalich. Thanks Rob, there's lots to see, do and get involved in this weekend. Grab your hats, dust off your boots and roll up your swag, it's rodeo time. The Serena Rodeo is on Saturday at the showgrounds, with gates opening at 3pm. Under fives are free and adults are $20. There will be a canteen, bar, entertainment till late and camping is available. There will be a Sunday's cruise and family fun day fundraising in honour of Ryan Craig on Sunday. The cruise will leave at 10am from the Botanic Gardens Amphitheatre car park to the Serena Showgrounds for some food, rides, music and raffles. 
It's just $20 per vehicle to take part. And if you want to get active, why not try a two kilometre obstacle course with 10 different challenges at the Ninja Hub on Sunday? Head to trybooking.com to lock in a session. Tickets are just $30. The event is a fundraiser to help the Hub's ninjas travelling to Anaheim, California for the World Series. And if you have an event coming up, email us at newsmky at 7.com.au. Have a great weekend and I'll see you next week. How did they do that? You're already having a great weekend, aren't you? It's yeah. only Thursday. Yeah, it's going all right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, Nath, he is hoping for another Queensland win tonight, mate, another big game before yeah, you Yeah, spot on, Bruffy. The women's side, they need it to level their series. While last night, five Cowboys were part of that record Maroons men win. And quite the dramatic evening. We'll have more on that next. And if some can't back up on Saturday, this 18-year-old is ready to go again for North Queensland after his big debut against the Roosters. And welcome back. Well, five Cowboys played their role in Queensland's biggest win in Sydney last night in that Maroons mauling of New South Wales in Game 1. Now, the 38-10 to 10 result came off the back of the quickest send-off in Origin history. But a Cowboys legend and Queensland assistant coach says the job's not done yet. An Origin three-peat is looming as Maroon magic breaks the Blues' spirit on their home turf. It was a good performance by the boys, a lot to work on, but um, it's not done yet. What's Origin without controversy? Eight minutes in and the game was turned upside down. A sickening shot ended Maroon's fullback Reese Walsh's night. Blues debutant Joseph Suwali'i sent straight off for the horror high hit. It's no surprise that the states are divided on this one too. Pretty black and white. They clearly had a target on him and um, yeah, it didn't turn out right. Obviously how yeah, he's sort of falling there, that's just my opinion. While the man at the centre of it is facing a four-match ban with an early guilty plea. I didn't mean it at all. I haven't um, breached that yet, but yeah, it'll be something I'll do. Already down 6-0 at that point, it created a mountain far too tall for the home side to climb. Queensland took a 20-6 lead into the half. By the buzzer, Cairns kid Hemiso Tabuai Fido had equaled the most tries in a single origin game, but he's yet to thank the man that put him in space for his first and second of three. I think I, I need to thank him for my tries. You know, he sort of made it a bit easy for me. Tom Dearden had never lost an Origin game before and he's kept it that way. Well, I thought we um, invited him into the game a few times but it was good that we um, we found our footy and got the job done. The top three tacklers were all Cowboys, Nanae, Cotter and Robson. The best among the boys was the club's blue blood. Richie Robson in the middle there was he was outstanding so uh, the amount of work that he got through. But the one Jeremiah Nanae will remember most, Robson's Try saver. The final score 38 to 10. Emma Halliday, 7 News. Now it's time to cheer on the Queensland women's side as they look to level their series against New South Wales in front of a sold out crowd tonight in Newcastle. And there's a few game day changes. Here's how the final 17 will line up. Lauren Brown will shift from the centres to hooker with debutante Emma Packey starting on the wing. That drops former North Queensland gold star Destiny Brill to the bench. It is simply must win for the side if they want Game 3 in Townsville to be a decider. And last night's result has certainly helped with the team morale. Fantastic when you watch the blokes go out there and do what we know that they're trying to do. And that, that gives us, our girls, some confidence to go and do the same tonight. So always a great mood when you see the boys have an emphatic win. The Sky Blues have made no late changes to their team with Cowboys Ja'Kai Whitfield and Kira Dibb the 18th and 19th players. Now in the NRL, the Cowboys are waiting to confirm on how many of their Origin stars will back up to face the Warriors on Saturday. That could determine whether 18-year-old Jackson Perdue holds his spot in the centres after the St Patrick's College graduate impressed on debut against the Roosters in a position he'd never played before. Only six months after graduating high school in Mackay, and Jackson Perdue realised his NRL dream, becoming Cowboy number 318. Just go out and enjoy it, mate. Um, just play footy. Footy's the same size, feels the same size. James is quick. As a kid, all you want to do is just play in a rail, and um, you know, most of your life you work hard, you work so hard for that, so. To be a part of it and to be a part of a win, yeah, it means a lot. And Perdue looked right at home on debut, helping North Queensland to a big upset, despite never playing in the centres before. I wanted the kickoff to hurry up and happen, just so, you know, the, um, I was in play and 
just didn't think about too much and um, yeah running out just gave me goosebumps and um, yeah it was an emotional moment but yeah so grateful. And there was a few times there where um, he sort of broke the line and I was like go you little fella. Purdue has been named again for Saturday's clash with the Warriors but that all depends on whether Valentine Holmes backs up from last night's origin. I'll just be ready for whatever happens and um, yeah just be um, bigger at training all week and yeah whatever happens happens. The Cowboys say they'll treat the return of their origin stars as a bonus not an expectation. Do exactly what we've done and make sure everyone's doing their job and getting their role done um, and yeah, plan as if they're not going to come back. Coach Todd Payton is expected to make the call on his final 17 after tomorrow's captain's run. James Ingram, 7 News. The Mackay Meteors and Meteorettes are in Brisbane tonight, ready to play three games in under 72 hours this weekend in the NBL One North. The Meteors, who are coming off their first loss of the season, will take on reigning champs the Ipswich Force tomorrow night. Then it's a quarter-final rematch on Saturday with the South West Metro Pirates. It all finishes Sunday afternoon against the second place Logan Thunder. If we can lock into our matchup assignments, make sure we execute as best we can based on the scout, um, then we'll be in a position to have success. If we don't, then it's going to be a long weekend. The Meteorettes head south, sitting 10th on the ladder, but a big weekend could see them come home in the top eight. I know a lot of the girls are really excited to get down to Brisbane tonight and then get ready for our first game tomorrow night, but yeah, it'll be a Big time weekend if we go three for three. Certainly would be. It all starts 6pm against Ipswich tomorrow. As for tonight in Newcastle, Bruffy, go to mm. Queenslanders. Let's hope they can make it two from two for the state. Absolutely, Good yeah. Stuff. Thank you very much, Nate. Have a look at the weather in a moment. And, of course, the fishing. Scotty will join us and lives up right after the break. Good evening, Livio Regano with tonight's weather. Well, today it was meant to have been the dodgy transition day to a sunny weekend, and there was talk of increased cloud and threats of showers that never really eventuated. If I'd just shut my mouth and said from day zero it was going to be stunning all week, few would have complained. Inland mornings are still quite cold, but it's warmed up near the coast where moisture levels have been steadily rising. Top temps today were close enough to average, with Mackay reaching 23 degrees. To the satellite loop now, well this cloud's becoming more and more disappointing each day. Uh, all that's left is a few filaments of high cloud through North Queensland. The southern stuff's mainly broken up. We did see a few light showers around the Darling Downs, especially the Granite Belt last night. And we will tomorrow. It's the one place left in Queensland with that residual southwest wind that may get some cloud and shower activity. The rest of the state will be dry as a chip. Today's chart, uh, the uh, trough has moved offshore already, but not the main front. It's connected to this weak low, and we're already starting to see those southerlies come in behind it, but only very light. It's enough to start clearing out some areas, but not uh, quite the Darling Downs just yet. Certainly further north, it's been a very, very nice day. Tomorrow's chart, the cold front now moves in full force out to sea and we see that those southwesterly start to kick in. This will really clear out uh, all the cloud, leaving clear sky statewide, except for the upslope winds around the granite belt, which could cause some showers. And then on the outlook chart, more of the same. We have a beautiful, typical midwinter position of the high anti-clockwise winds, a guaranteed dry, cool situation for the whole state. So the latest now from BOM, boating forecast for Mackay Waters. Southerly winds tomorrow between 10 and 20 knots with seas under a metre. 10 to 15 knots southerlies on Saturday, swinging a bit more southeasterly for Sunday. We're still riding the new moon tides, biggest tides of the month, as huge volumes of seawater move up and down coastal rivers and along beaches. Be wary of strong currents. Central Coast and Whitsundays, a bright sunny day. Mackay 11 degrees tonight, 23 tomorrow. Bowen 26, Proserpine 25. Central Highlands and Caulfield, sunny day after some frost and or fog in the south. Emerald 7 to 22 degrees, Claremont also 22 more and bar 24. Looking ahead for Mackay, should be a glorious weekend for the great Aussie outdoors, so make the most of it. Nice and cool, especially at night, but warming up very slightly from the middle of next week. And that's all, folks. Pleasure to have your company. Thanks for watching 7 Local Weather. I'll be back tomorrow with more. Hope you can join me. Now it's over to Scott Hillier with the Fishing Report.
Yeah, good on you, Liv. Well, cool conditions this week. I've seen those winter species really start to turn up. Now for the weekend, really good run on the tide. Thanks to the new moon, I'm thinking the inshore pelagic fishing should be pretty red hot. Here's a couple of tips. Now, as I always say, that early morning tide change will be the go to chase a couple of mackerel species. Look for your bait areas, a little bit of current. Now, most are being caught on trolled hole baits of gar, your ribbon fish, or even pilchards at around that four knot speed. With a few belting, those bigger deep diving hard bodied lures trolled a little bit quicker. Now, also, casting 20 gram slugs are seeing a couple of the smaller mackerel and still a few good tuna getting around as well. Dolphin fish out on the local fads cannot resist an unweighted livey. So make sure you get a couple of liveys and try that. Also some good cobia on the wrecks taking live bait along with knife jigs and soft plackies. Hey, throw the pots in. Still good muddies getting around as well. Now check this out. Mike was all smiles when he fished off his local pontoon under the cover of darkness to land this lovely flathead. Good on you, Mike. Now if you are chasing more outdoor action, make sure you join me Saturday 5.30 for Creek to Coast. I'm doing a fishing special over in Tasmania. One not to be missed. And if you hit the water, hope you bend a couple of rods. See you next week. Scotty, wonderful mate. Thank you very much and lovely having your company. We'll see you tomorrow night. And a reminder, catch up on anything you missed on our 7 Plus app or our page 7news.com.au. Take care. Good night.